Okay, another math video from AlgebraTestHelper.com. And what I want to focus on in this video is how to use the quadratic formula. So what I have is a basic quadratic equation. And this uh, quadratic equation, I might be able to solve it using a factoring. And there's other techniques like completing the square and some other things that we can do. But the cool thing about the quadratic formula is that uh, we can use the quadratic formula on any quadratic equation to solve it. Okay, and of course, this is the quadratic formula right there. And if you're not familiar with it, you're definitely going to need to uh, learn this and memorize it. So it's just a, a quick example to kind of introduce to you how to use uh, the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and get going. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make, you need to make sure that your quadratic equation is written in standard form. And all that means is it's from the highest power to the lowest power in order. So here I have x squared then I have x, x to the first, and then here's my number. Okay, so you have to uh, write your quadratic equation in this particular order of decreasing powers, and then of course it's gotta be equal to zero. All right, so that's the first thing you need to check. All right, so if in fact your quadratic equation is written in standard form, okay, and if it isn't, let me just kinda just throw this out. If it isn't, just go ahead and shift around the numbers and the variables uh, such that it is. But once it is in standard form, you, could, you can use a quadratic equation. All right. So now the next thing we're going to have to do is determine our A, B, and C values. So if we just take a quick look at the quadratic formula down here, you can see we have um, these particular values, B, A, and C. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign um, the actual number of values to A, B, and C up here once we have our equation in standard form. So let's go ahead and do that. A, okay, A is always going to be the coefficient or the number in front of the x squared term. Okay, in this case, there is a 1 here. Okay, we don't normally write 1 x squared. It's just x squared. So our A value is 1. Okay, now our B value is going to be the number in front of the x term, that middle term, and that's going to be negative 6. Okay, so we have to be real careful here. And then our C value is always going to be that number there. Okay, so let me go ahead and just highlight it for you. Okay, the number is always going to be the C term, and that's going to be 5. All right, so we have A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is 5. So what we have to do is plug those values into the quadratic uh, formula down here. Now, this is where students really, really have to be careful here. So let me go ahead and show you, and I'll just kind of talk, um, show you the... Uh, the common pitfalls where students make a mistake. The very first one is right here. This is minus b. I'm going to just state the formula to you. It's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So right here you have to be really careful. See, our b value is negative 6. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to go minus and minus 6. So you always want to use parentheses when you're plugging in these values. So let me show you minus a minus 6 is minus b, okay, because b was negative 6. Plus or minus, okay, I'm just kind of following the formula here, b squared minus 4ac. Now b squared is going to be minus 6 squared minus 4 times a, and a was 1, times c, and c was 5, so let me put that right here, all over 2 times a, and of course a was 1. All right, so that's the basic setup. Now let me give you a little uh, advice here. Once you plugged in your values into the quadratic formula, you want to double check just to make sure that you, in fact, you plugged everything in correctly. Because, you know, if you if you did, you're going to go ahead and just now start doing a lot of uh, numeric um, operations to simplify this expression. So let's move on. Okay, I'm confident I did this correctly. And so now we have um, x equals minus minus six. Okay. The opposite of a negative 6 is a positive 6, plus or minus the square root of, okay, minus 6 squared is what? What's negative 6 squared? All right, that's going to be a positive 36 minus 4 times 1 times 5. 4 times 1 times 5 is going to be 20, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, so you see how I'm just kind of working it step by step? That's exactly what you want to be doing. Okay, so let's move on. So I have 6 plus or minus the square root of 30 minus 20 
and 30 minus 20 is in fact 16 all over 2. So we're almost there. Okay, so x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 16. So that's going to be 6 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4 over 2. Now, let me go ahead and just show you something here. This plus or minus is always going to be part of the quadratic uh, formula because there's always two solutions, two roots to any quadratic equation. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how we find them. Okay, so the first one, you can use this notation, x1 is our first one, is going to be 6 plus, so we have 6 plus or minus 4 over 2. We're going to use both uh, scenarios. So we'll use a 6 plus 4 over 2. And our second solution is going to be where we're going to use 6 minus 4 over 2. So that's where the plus or minus comes in. All right, and when we do that, we get 10. 6 plus 4 is 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5. And then over here, 6 minus 4 is going to be 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, so 5 and 1 are in fact your two solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay, so hopefully this was a, a nice little introduction uh, uh, to the quadratic formula, of course, uh, just in case you haven't seen it before. But um, anyways, hope this video helps you out. Uh, please come by our website, AlgebraTestHelper.com. Um, it's a great free resource filled with uh, other videos like this and some other awesome tutorials all designed to make math easy to learn. All right, so take care and good luck.